Good morning, everyone. Well, here we are, a week after remembering Jesus has risen from the dead, albeit some 2,000 years later. Our reading this morning comes from a time about three to six months after Jesus rose from the dead and t- tells us something about how those early Christians conducted their lives. It is the second passage in Acts that does this. We also read in Acts 2:42 about how they conducted their lives. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were saved. These people ones who had been terrified just after Jesus had been crucified and hid behind closed doors, had changed after Pentecost and were now bold and certain about their faith. We see that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and fasting. They were overjoyed that their Saviour had risen from the dead and ascended into heaven and given them the Holy Spirit. We come in a few weeks to the remembrance of the Ascension and to Pentecost and I look forward to you joining us for these services. Our Ascension Day service will be on Thursday the 9th of May at 7.30 in the evening and our Pentecost service will be on Sunday the 19th of May here at 10.30. The early Christians were meeting every day as we read in Acts 2 verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They met together regularly and they enjoyed fellowship with one another on what would appear to be a daily basis. Are we that regular in spending our time in worship? Or has our routine become just to meet on a Sunday when we can make it? That is, if there is nothing else that we want to do. What is our priority? What is your priority? In John's Gospel, Jesus teaches us that those who teaches those that who were at the Last Supper that they would it would be the love that they show for one another that will be one of the defining aspects of their witness. John 34 and 35 says. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. This is the kind of life that they were leading in the reading. They, they were showing love for one another. They met together regularly. They shared meals together. And they praised God together. Another aspect of lives was that they shared everything that they had. And they did not count it all as their own. One of the principal things in our reading is about is the sharing that they 
had between themselves and what this is about. And this is what I want to really talk to you about today. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you that uh, you should sell your homes and put all the money into a communal pot that um, Brendan's going to look after. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> we also read in Acts that they met regularly in their own houses for fellowship and teaching. So they hadn't sold their own houses. They were still living in them. They were still meeting in them. What I think is meant by the phrase, they shared everything they had, is that they all had different skills, different amounts of time, different amounts of disposable income, as we would call it today. And they shared what they had to help each other. Yes, some sold land and made the money available to the disciples for the use of the community to share amongst the needy, but it was not all. Each of us has different skills that we can share with the church to undertake the works of God and to benefit others in the church. There are some shining examples of this going in our, on our in, in our church currently. For example, those who have cooked for us on different occasions. I'm thinking about the Christmas meal that Magda cooked last December and all those who are here that ate it, I'm sure, appreciated it. There is also... Jane and Helen, who prepared the soup for our morning day supper. But my question is, are you hiding any skills that you have? I'm thinking of people who can do things that others can't. It might be helping to draw up a letter to somebody or other that somebody's worried about. It might be Decorating. It might be helping with the children. It might be helping with childcare. There are many skills that each of us have. We aren't all multi skilled. There are also jobs within the church that need to be done helping with services, helping Steve with the maintenance jobs helping with the children's and young people's work, becoming a member of the PCC to help Tim run the church and discuss what we should be doing as a church. The list is endless, really, and we can show our love for one another by offering our services to help. Also, what we have available to offer God might change over time. If I look back over my life and what I have been able to do, it has changed over time. As a young Christian, I helped with the Pathfinder group, the Scout group, and at one time I was even a group scout leader, scout troop leader and cub pack leader all for various reasons. The Cub Scout leader's uh, husband removed the floor in the hallway in front of the front door. He didn't tell his wife he'd done that. <laughs> she walked in and broke her leg. <laughs> I ended up running the, the Cub Pack as well. <laughs> there were things that we have to fit in with and we have to fill in as needed. I also became a member of the Cypher group, and when the leader got married and moved away, I took over. At this time, I was at university, and so was having... My giving was limited, 
to the giving of my time because I didn't have much money. Later, after I, Valerie and I had moved to Luton and we worshipped in St. Matthew's, we both served on the PCC. Valerie typed the parish magazine and I spent my time duplicating and collating it. Valerie was national coordinator of Meet a Mum Association, helping to form support groups for mums with postnatal depression all over the country. She herself had suffered from it. We did not have much money. When we first came to Luton, our financial giving was limited as Valerie was unable to work because there wasn't the work available in teaching at the time. And those of you who were around in the early 80s will remember the mortgage rate went up to 16%. It was a struggle. Over time, our financial si situation improved I signed a covenant agreeing to give the church a certain amount of money for seven years. That was the way it was done at the time. Then my business landlord decided that the rent would go up, which I could not afford. So I had to ask the church wardens at the time to release me from that covenant because I could not pay. In fact, we were living on what was left after I paid the staff that I employed and met the bills that I had. I ended up having to liquidate the business, which had ended up being a benefit because it meant that I had to take up another job. And working for another company, it gave us a regular income something that we had not had for 10 years. Subsequently, things got better, and I am able to give both time and money to the church. Now, I haven't told you all this to say that I was a good boy. Sometimes I wasn't, I'm sure. I have been... I've used it to illustrate the things that can change in life the things that can change and affect what we can give and when. It can change as your life changes. What is important is that we give what we are able to do when we are able to. So what does this passage teach us individually and as a church about giving? Firstly, it shows us that we should have a mindset for giving. Luke, in his description of the early church, gives the impression that the early church believers spontaneously gave to meet the needs of one another. It seems that giving arose out of natu the natural mindset that they ought to be looking out for one another. This is one of the key signs one has become a follower of Jesus, the one who has experienced the saving grace of Christ, not only becomes conscious of God, but also of their neighbours, especially when those are members of the family of God. Becoming a Christian far from makes a person self-centred and focusing on their own peace with God. It leads to a focus on the needs of others. The Christian, I believe, becomes more aware of people and their needs, and this leads to a desire to give where we have the power to give. It may be money, it may be possessions, it may be time. It may be even just spending some time giving somebody some attention and listening to them and sharing their concerns and their worries. 
how do we do all this? Well, how attentive are you? How well do you know the needs of the church? Do you you pay attention to the reports on how well the monetary giving is meeting the church budget? Do you go beyond greeting people with how are you and moving on to your seat? Or do you spend some time finding out how your brothers and Christians, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ are really doing? You could say that giving starts with caring enough to show their, to know their needs. It is only when you care that you will find the real needs and know how you can help. In true Christian giving, we are not paying God back for anything. We are not doing anyone any favours. We are joining in the joy for what God created us. And Jesus gave his life to redeem us. We are joining in the activity of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and what they delight in doing themselves. That is a wonderful privilege that God has given us. We will be having a gift day at Pentecost. But I would ask you to consider in the meantime what you are able to give to God in your life. Where can you help? Review what you give. Has it been the same direct debit for year upon year? Could you afford to increase it? Could you help with the children's work? We can always do with more helpers. Could you help with the tea and the coffee after the service? Could you become a member of the PCC and help shape the mission of the church? I hope I have shown you that giving is not just money. It's the giving of yourself and your possessions into the service of God. Amen.